All right, thank you very much for my volunteers. Oh my God. Um, today you may have noticed we're going to be doing two short exercises together because they are linked like this. So therefore, I'll go through quickly with these, confirm whether we've got right one answers um, and how we got them, and then we'll move on. Okay, so if you have done all three questions, you're welcome to start jotting down this, and uh, we'll get to it in a couple of minutes. So, for starters, let's have a look at number one. Now, you're asked to solve for all of these questions. So you can see there's a pretty rule there, the letter P. You're trying to find out the value that makes this work, right? P outside of P plus 9 equals negative 20. Uh, it's not in a very useful form. So what has happened from the first line to the second line? What's going on? I can see two things that have happened. Yes. Ari, do you he want to tell me the first he thing? He expanded and then he brought the negative 20. No, he added negative 20 to both sides. P times P plus 9 has been expanded here. But then the right-hand side, having that negative 20 over there is not helpful. So we add 20 to both sides. That makes the right-hand side 0. And everything else is on the left. Once everything's on the left, it's nice and neat. You can recognize that. You can say, ah, this is a quadratic. I can factorize it fairly easily. P plus 4, P plus 5 will do it. Therefore, one of them has to be 0, or both. So one of them. Uh, if it's negative 5, we'll make that 0. If it's negative 4, we'll make this 0. There are your solutions. And there are two. When you had a look at number 2, similar kind of problem, but it was more challenging because I gave you something with a number out the front here, which wasn't 1. Does anyone remember? What is that called? Do you know what that name is called? So for example, over here, the number out's attached to the p squared is just a 1, so we call this... So the coefficient is 1. So we call this monic. Here, oh. the coefficient is not 1, so we call it not non monic. Yeah, I suppose you could call it poly. Anyway, there isn't a word as far as I know. It's not monic. That means you have to work a little bit harder to factorize. But you can see, this uh, next line, we've broken apart the minus 7u into minus 12u and plus 5u. Why on earth would we do that? Why would we split it up? Any takers? Why is splitting up, let me highlight it for you, just in case you're not quite following. Why is splitting up minus 7u into minus 12u plus 5u, why is that more useful? We've uncollected like terms. We have, we've broken it apart. Minus 12u plus 5u looks like it's best here, not better. Why is that an improvement? Maybe you can have a look and see what happens on the next line. By the way, I think there's a plus missing there. There we go. What's happened from the second line to the third line? You can see, oh, I can pair things up. I can recognize a common factor for 15u squared and minus 12u. Let me say that again. I can recognize a common factor for 15u squared and minus 12u. Have a look. What is the common factor? It's u. It's u and it's 3. So 3u at the same time. Once you pull that out, excuse me. Once you pull that out, you can see, oh, now I've got something that's factorized. Don't forget, by the way, these are both equal to zero. You've got equations going all the way down, so don't um, don't forget the fact that it is still an equation. From there, you've just got these bits. Why would five u be equal to four? Why would you draw that conclusion? Like, where does this even come from? I don't see a five u in a four range like that. Yeah. Very good. In case you didn't quite catch that, I only had exactly right. 5u minus 4 is one of the factors. Well, if you've got two things multiplied together, they give 0. One of the factors has to be 0. So here's one of them, 5u minus 4. If it's equal to 0, as I can suggest, if you add 4 to both sides, this is what you get, and there's a solution. Alternatively, it might not be that factor that's 0. What's the other factor? 3u three three plus 1. If that factor is equal to 0, then you can see you subtract 1 from both sides, and that gives you this, and off you go, you've got your next solution. Okay? Thumbs up. And I've already done a check of this one, so well done. I will just make a minor, very, very tiny note. When you get equations which have t in them, which is actually quite common, um, I'm going to encourage you to put a t with a tail on it. Anyone want to suggest why that might be a good idea? Because it looks just like a plus sign if you don't. And especially when you're in a hurry in an exam, you're like T plus, and then you're like, what am I even reading? So I encourage you to put a, um, a tail on it just so you can distinguish. 
It's the same reason why if you see a Z in a question, uh, I tend to put a dash through it so you don't mistake it for R. Two. Two.